Okay. Who are you? Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Al Suarez, and I just came from Burlington. This is my second time at Occupy Boston, and I'm here to stay this time because, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't bring the camp back yet, and the cops have been after us, especially the homeless members of occupiers, and everybody knows each other in Burlington, so the cops are very discriminatory in their methods, and the media is not very cooperative with us, the, the, the mass media, the major papers there. I'm a freelance journalist, but also an activist, an occupier. I was from early November at um, Occupy Burlington, which started in late October, so I was pretty much there from the beginning, and uh, I just, you know, arrived here from, from over there, and things since they closed on the camp have been very hectic, as they have been in other areas in New York, etc. So, you know, I'm just here to learn from you guys, and, you know, Hopefully get a tent and and um, you know help out with the movement here as well. So, do you have a do you have a physical camp right now? No. no. What 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 do you do? We How do you occupy? Shelter. Well, we're not literally not occupying anything at school. We have GAs at parks. Um, there's a very serious uh, shelter issue where they don't take in um, homeless people that drink or also just homeless people that that are normal like you or me. But because they're overcrowded. And they're small, they're small shelters, we're talking about Vermont here, so they're small shelters. There's a lot of the people that are on the street, they're going to suffer extreme cold, they're going to die from cold. A lot of them drink to feel warm, so they're not necessarily alcoholics, but, you know, drinks are passed around socially or whatnot, and they're treated like scum of the earth. And these are the people we're fighting for. We're fighting for the poor people, people that have been kicked out of good jobs and ended up homeless, that are victims of society. Who treats them badly? The cops, uh, the city, are completely... You know, they don't care. They promised they would do something about it after they close our camp down, which they have not. All they've done is that an insult to injury. They took down our TP, our community center. They took down the rest of the tents. They destroyed several items, and they've refused to compensate us. And the media over there has completely ignored me. I've had to cover it myself as a freelance journalist on my online radio show. I'm trying to tell people what's going on, but there, you, there's only a limited amount of people you can get to um, if you don't have enough connections. So I'm, you know, a new journalist with the movement, but, you know, this movement in general is, is, is new. It's, there are people asking, what are our demands? We've been around, what, two, three months? And they're already starting to close camps in, in, in the wintertime. And it's great that you guys are still around, but, you know, we have to start looking for alternative ways to to bring back the, the occupation over there, maybe for people from here, I don't know, but we need to work together because they're trying to cause division among the ranks, you know, so we need to uh, find, you know, uh, a better a better way to be able to bring that society, that community, that collective uh, of working together, you know, to have a new idea, a new mentality, you know, that is not with the norms of the society. You know, we're outside of, you know, the 1% or the elite that are running the society and we're trying to build our own society. That's how I see it. Like, you want to see it as a place to hang out. That's not how I've seen it from the beginning. I've seen it from that community that I've been dreaming about for a long time that I want to bring to a reality. You said you were telling me something earlier about a young woman you know. Oh, yeah. Her name is Amanda. She was a friend of Josh, the guy who um, shot himself currently. And, um, you know, the cops pulled his body out, still with life in it, and she was, you know, traumatized. You know, she was there during all of that. And then the cops, that had insult to injury, yesterday arrested her over a warrant for not paying a disorderly. I mean, how is a homeless person going to be able to pay for a disorderly? She attended all the GAs. She was very active. You know, Josh was active. He worked on safety. Just because they're homeless, well, half our camp are homeless. Just because they're homeless doesn't mean they're there to hang out because the shelter sent them there. That is for some of the cases. But they're there because they're also activists like us. And, uh, you know, I also became homeless when they closed down the camp. And, uh, you know, Amanda, over just not being a disorderly thing from months ago, had a warrant out that she didn't know about. The cops just randomly, you know, they're sending out flyers saying, go after the homeless, go after the belligerent, and they, they put her in jail. We bailed her out last night. Um, but, yeah, I mean, instead of being sensitive to these people that just suffered a tragedy, ever since the tragedies happened a couple weeks ago, all they've done is take advantage of it and, and add insult to injury and betrayed us and stabbed us in the back. The city hall included. We, they lured us in the city hall. It's all on YouTube. They lured us in the city hall, and then you know I was there. And then we, and then some one of our fellow campers got a text saying they were taking over the rest of the encampment. They were taking over our teepee. You know it was outside of the perimeter. So they lured us in there to talk, and then we ran out. And then the cops came out with ready to shoot tear gas, and they started randomly detaining people. They detained my friend Haley, uh, socialist girl Haley, and it took us chanting for an hour for the mayor finally, you know, not figuring out why she was being held, let her go. But I think it was planned to make look the hero because now all the media over there, oh, Mayor Kiss of Burlington, he let the girl go. Well, it didn't really exactly happen that way. You have to have been there or seen the, the real YouTube videos because there's so many media distortions behind it. You said about half your camp is 
was homeless yes. before the occupation. Mm -hmm. um, half of how many people is that? Well, we had about 100 campers, so about 50 of them were homeless. And of course, the like I believe the Burlington Free Press said the, the, the numbers were different. I, I won't say the exact numbers that I don't remember off the top of my head, but the numbers were different. I was actually there, and I can tell you we had at least 100 campers consistently, and the people from outside that came to visit during the day, and uh, about half of them were homeless people, and and you know were also active in the GA, the far majority. How many people go to your GAs these days? Very few, unfortunately. Uh, a few dozen. Because there's no camp. I mean, they just go to the park if, if they find out about it from online, if they're able to get a call or whatnot. Are they they're not regularly scheduled? Uh, yeah, they are. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what time, but I, I attend the ones that I can. Uh, yeah. What What is your big subject of conversation these days? Is it trying to identify another spot to occupy 24-7? That should be the conversation. That's the conversation that I'm trying to encourage, and I even wrote part of a proposal that's going to be read tomorrow in Burlington, encouraging that, because there haven't even been really discussion on it. People are still in shock, and I think they need to wake up from that tragedy and, and, and fight back, like we say in the chant. That's what we were saying in the chant when we were coming out of City Hall United, in one voice. We said, we said, uh, what was the chant? Uh, what do you do when under attack? Stand up, fight back. And that's what we have to do. We have to fight back, or otherwise, you know, by come by springtime, we're going to go Arab Spring. We're going to bring an American Spring. But by springtime, we're going to lose momentum unless we're able to bring the camp there. And that's what I've been consistently trying to tell my fellow occupiers over there. And hopefully, we can be inspired from the Boston example and be able to apply it over there. And, you know, you have a good safety system set up from what I heard in that meeting the other night. And I think that we can really apply that over there and prevent, you know, giving up or you know on a silver platter to, to state the excuse that they need to take over the camp. We can't give them that excuse. We have to be better than that. We have to be united and be prepared to do civil disobedience or whatever is necessary.